Investigative report reveals culture of corruption and tribalism at the Nigerian Immigration Service. These are likely responsible for the shortage of passports. We'll be speaking with uh, the journalist David Hunday. Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, discloses it can handle electronic voting and transmission of results. All the details this morning. And also much more details on the front pages of newspapers. Sit back for Off the Press. It's another Monday morning here on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for joining us. It's uh, The Breakfast here, and I am Osao Gi Ogbo. And I am Annette Felix saying good morning, and thank you for joining us on the last week's edition of the month of September. It's the September the 27th, and we're so excited um, to just get you through the rest of your day with the top trending stories, current affairs all across Nigeria. And one morning to you, Osao Gi. Good morning. How are you again? Oh, fantastic. How was yours? It was pretty interesting. Mm. I think um, one of the highlights of the weekend for the whole of the nation is the fact that um, after spending almost three months in captivity, about 10 students of the Bethel Baptist High School in Chicken Local Government area of Kaduna State have been released. Um, we heard news of their release. Sunday afternoon, um, state authorities confirmed that you know these students have been reunited with their families, and that about 11 more you know are still in captivity. But let's take your minds back to July the 5th, 2021. On that very day, um, bandits basically stormed that school, that Bethel High School. Um, they shot into the air and they whisked away over 100 students, and um, specifically about 100. And 21. They took them to an unknown destination and they've been there ever since. And that's for like 83 days now. And um, about 110 students have been released and that's been in batches. You know, they release 10 today, they release one tomorrow. It's just been headache and heartache for, you know, parents of these, uh, of the students, you know, battling to make sure their kids come back alive. And even though state government and, you know, law enforcement keeps saying that their stance on this matter is that they would not pay ransom, they would not negotiate with bandits. And parents of these victims have a different story to tell. But a good thing is that 10 more students of the Bethel Baptist High School in Kaduna State have been freed and that the process of releasing 11 more, you know, have basically been kick-started. Well, um, you know, like you said, you know, there's always uh, some confusion whether ransom has been paid or not. Um, but if you look at the way that it has been happening, you know, it's, you know, either the bandits had a change of heart, you know, with five today and then two weeks later had another change of heart with ten. Or, you know, the parents and whoever is able to raise money, they contribute and then they take the ones who have been paid for and they set them free and the rest, you know, will wait until they have enough money to pay for them. Nobody knows. Um, the Kaduna State government, obviously, and the Nigerian government cannot say that for the last 83 days, they've not been able to figure out any tactic whatsoever to release Nigerians who are in captivity. It's, it's not possible to, you know, put, you know, that information out. Uh, they can't say that in the last 80 days they've not been able to in any way, either negotiate or find ways to um, use security and, you know, um, tactics, basically, from the army, the DSS, the police, everyone, um, to get those people free. So it almost feels, you know, you can almost look at the story and almost, you know, interpret it to mean that um, the government itself has not really been interested in, you know, getting those kids free. And another thing is the fact that, the, yeah, this story, you know, broke over the weekend, but I'm sure a lot of Nigerians at this point didn't even bother opening the, the story or looking at it or caring that much. And that's really because of how much kidnapping has become, you know, a part of, you know, the, our lives, you know, as Nigerians. I'm sure, you know, a lot of people have also seen the NYSC um, the booklet, you know, that basically was saying, you know, you know, build a relationship with your kidnappers. Don't and resist. Be traveling. Exactly. Don't resist. Tell people where you're traveling to, you know, because of all of that, you know, and if people can gather around some for you and some of the, all, all of that, it almost feels like, you know, kidnapping is like a regular market day across Nigeria. Um, and that's why not very many people care so much, you know, about a story like this anymore, which is, you know, shocking. Um, but Obviously, this is, these are the times that we currently have found ourselves in Nigeria. Mm. Um, and so what would make the other 11 be released? That's what everyone has to, you know, fold their arms and wait or hope that, you know, the same reason that got this 10 out now will get the other 11 out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what has been done? You know, are there going to be more kidnappings? And can the Nigerian government honestly say 
that in the last 80 days they've not been able to figure out where these you know people have been taken to it's 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 almost impossible and 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 it would, it would make you continue to question what really this current administration has been able to achieve with regard to security and what their stance is really with the lives and the value of the Nigerian life, if we're being honest with ourselves. Because I'm not saying government can continue to make those statements and say, oh, no ransom will be paid in the state and so uh -huh. all of that. But it hasn't changed anything. People are still being kidnapped. Um, and if you can sit in your office as governor for 80 days while, some, while um, dozens of kids are in captivity, what exactly are you there for as a governor? Who is the Commissioner of Police in Kaduna State? What are you there for? What, what really has been your role in protecting the lives and property of people in Kaduna State? I can only just celebrate with those parents and hope that the, the uh, parents of the other 11 eventually find a reason to smile soon um, and, you know, wait for next time it happens or pray that it doesn't happen again. Mm. So um, some sort of uh, bad news for the Nigerian community is this. Um, professional British boxer Anthony Joshua over the weekend, lost his WBA, WBO, and IBF um, world title belts. He got, you know, this beaten by this boxer, and, uh, and that was over in 12 rounds. People really didn't see this coming. You know, Anthony Joshua, the more bulky guy, has all the support of, you know, home and abroad. And this just happened on Sunday. And... Um, I think one thing sports analysts really have been pointing to is that there was this contract extension with um, the, the company. Um, it's called Matchroom Boxing. And that this is basically his first first match, you know, just after that signing. And that, you know, just portends a very bad omen, you know, for the rest of his career. But anyway, a rematch is likely to be scheduled soon. That's supposed to happen um, probably in February 2022. Um, let's just see how that happens. You know, there they, they are talks about it holding either in Ukraine or the UK but he might just have another chance to win those back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't Good think, thing they didn't play the you don't, you don't think so? Fight because <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so, uh, if I'm being honest. Um, the guy who he fought, Yusik, I think that's his name, yes. is a really, really good fighter. He's a, he's a really fast and powerful fighter. Um, has better moves, leg movement, everything. Anthony Joshua really just went in there like a bouncer, you know, and got his, himself beaten up. This is the first time I've seen Anthony Joshua with swollen eyes um, after a fight. And it, it definitely was disappointing for a lot of people because in the build-up to the fight, there was pictures, he was on social media, he was, you know, you know, gathering all this, you know, emotions towards the fight. Like, it was it really just going to walk in there and beat this guy up like a, like a little kid and, you know, live there after three rounds. But look at, look at his face after fighting yeah, music. I don't know how to explain this to anybody that, you know, our own Anthony Joshua... Well, British born and well, Nigerian born, not even sure anymore. Anthony Joshua got beaten so badly in 12 rounds. If you, I watched the fight, I watched it online. I was embarrassed. The, the final round of this fight was probably the worst. You know, to see him just being slapped left and right, and, and it, it felt like he didn't even train for the fight at all. And, you know, I, have, I, I, I had conversations over the weekend. I was talking to a few people and said, I, I genuinely have never really seen Anthony Joshua as that fighter. Yes, we support him because he's partly Nigerian and, you know, some of all of that. But I've never looked at him fight or looked at his, yes, you know, he's an Olympic champion, this and that. He beat uh, the other Ukrainian brother, the Klitschko, you know, uh, uh, guy, and some of all of that. But I've never watched him fight and looked at him and said, oh, this is a, a completely dangerous and skillful fighter. I don't know what his, you know, tactics are, are with boxing. I'm not, you know, so vast with boxing. But I've never seen it, you know, and every time, it's embarrassing really because every time that um, he, he they, they set up this Tyson Fury fight, and then for some reason, the Tyson Fury fight can't happen. And then they pair him with some random contender. And it makes it even more embarrassing that this random contender that they just pushed push to him beats him. him. It happened the last time. Luckily, he was able to you know, win the re uh, rematch. And now it's happened the second time. How is this same Joshua going to fight Deontay Wilder or oh, fight Tyson Fury? He yes. may not survive two rounds <laughs> with any of these people. And that's honestly the way that I feel. And it's not because I'm trying to, you know, look, I'm looking down on Anthony Joshua mm -hmm. or not being patriotic. I just have never seen him as a, a very, very prolific mm. fighter. But he's vowing to come back. Um, let's take a listen. Well done to uh, the winner. And um, we'll be back again. Get back into training. Great 12 rounds. Great experience as well, I mean. And then um, we progress from this point on once again. So um, we'll be doing it all again soon. We'll be wrong, just taking a loss, but we'll get it right. 
probably in the ninth. From the ninth, I couldn't see in the ninth round. I couldn't see anything really. <laughs> like, my eye was shut. But it was a good experience because, like, in adversity, um, you just got to learn to control yourself, stay on top of things. So when I couldn't see anything, it's the first time it's happened in a fight. So I was thinking, all right, cool, this is the first time uh, my eyes close up in a fight. I can't see nothing. But I'm looking at a one eye kind of thing. You've got to apply pressure behind your jab and your right hand, and you've got to keep him off balance, and you've got to put shots together when you get there. But like, like, as we've seen tonight, Usyk's a very good boxer. But look, you know, Anthony's already addressed that he's learning on the job, and you know, he showed that in the Ruiz rematch. And I've got no doubts that if you know he applies himself, which he will, that you know he'll get a great performance in the rematch because Usyk's uh, Usy boxed tremendously well tonight, and Anthony will have learned loads tonight. You, you know, you've got to got to apply better pressure with a fighter like that and not give him too much time. And that's really what should happen. Weirdly, it's a lot easier to take because you know how good Usyk is and, and you always know that if you don't get it right, there is a chance you could get beat. Get the Ruiz fight, I guess we are probably a bit naive at the time, almost walking on air, that AJ would just steamroll through everyone. And that was just one, a bolt from the blue that you sort of couldn't get over for weeks. Tonight, you just say, it's sport. You got beaten by the better man. What are you going to do about it? Go away, dust yourself down, improve, and try and beat him in the rematch. But that's all you can do. Well, um, good luck to Anthony and Joshua. I'm, I'm not really not even excited. I, I, we win some, we lose some. Let's, let's, Why was he beaten so bad? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let's cut him some slack. If uh, he had won, the conversation would be different. And you can't expect to win all the time. So please. No, I mean, I get that. You know, Give I'm, him a I'm break. just re really saying that I've never, and this is, you know, me personally, you know, and uh, it's okay that I could be wrong. I've just never seen Anthony Joshua and thought he was a completely dangerous fighter, or, you know, really, really skilled well, fighter. Well, people have thought a lot of things about people and they went on to like prove they're wrong, so. <laughs> well, he's failed twice now. You know, yes, he will always get a, re a rematch or, you know, another fight to hopefully claim his titles back, but his, this is the second time Guess who happening. proved someone else's, someone else wrong? Arsenal, tell us more about that match. I don't care about <laughs> Arsenal. And this, oh is, my. this is a combination of wow. things that made my weekend very, very bad. You know, first of all, Manchester United lost. Um, Chelsea lost also, I don't care about Chelsea either. Um, but they lost, you know, and then also Manchester United lost embarrassingly. <laughs> and then to make matters worse, you know, I thought it was, I was just complete the weekend with, you know, everybody losing, including Arsenal, but then Arsenal won. <laughs> Uh, Tottenham and then Anthony Joshua lost. It's it was just a very very bad sporting weekend. But congratulations to Arsenal, um, finally returning to winning ways. Um, mm -hmm. You know I'm sure by the last game a lot of people were already uh, tweeting uh, Ateta out. But hopefully this one will keep him there for a little long time so that eventually we finish that into the season. Mm -hmm. um, he wouldn't be sacked. You know and that's the way it always happens with Arsenal. You know they win one game and then everybody relaxes and so you know Ateta is a good coach and you know then they lose another five and then the one team out and then they win one game and then eventually they finish 11 to 13 this season. So good luck you know, and congratulations to them. Um, I didn't get to watch the game, but you know, for Arsenal fans across you know, the world, I'm sure they're very, very excited. It's a mm. local derby with uh, Tottenham. Um, you know, I think ended three goals to one, I believe, uh, which, which, which is really, really good you know, to see Arsenal score more than one goal in a game mm -hmm. or even get them to win any game. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy for them, but congratulations to Arsenal fans. Um, I mean, it's sports. Anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's it on Top Trending this morning. Let's take a break and see um, what's trending on the papers. Stay with us.